back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television and coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. A faction of Boko Haram kills a second aid worker, vows to keep back to schoolgirl Leah Sharibu in slavery for life. Federal government condemns action by a terrorist group. UK calls for free and fair elections in 2019 as British authorities plan to meet with major presidential candidates ahead of the poll next year. PDP Reconciliation Committee meets with the party's presidential aspirants to forge a united front ahead of the 2019 elections. And US President Donald Trump suggests Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi's disappearance could be traced to rogue killers. TV.com has more information for you and on youtube.com forward slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app has an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. As the presidential election draws closer, spokespersons of the presidential candidates under the platforms of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party have been speaking on their chances of the principles. On our breakfast show Sunrise Daily today, Mr. Festus Kiamo spoke on how the president has been able to diversify the economy in the area of agriculture, with the international community applauding the government's economic policies. This is about the first government that has made the deliberate plan to run away from the oil sector. The mono economy we run. Have you seen the content of the economic recovery and growth plan that the whole world has applauded? The whole of the European leaders have applauded that this is one of the best programs, economic program you have put on, you know, on, 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 on ground to pull the country out of poverty and pull it out of recession. It concentrates on expanding the economy beyond the mono economy. And that is why you see today that agriculture is one of the best ever, you know, um, uh, enter of foreign, uh, uh, foreign earnings beyond oil. It is one of the, because you see the statistics, in the first quarter of 2018, we earned 577 billion naira, first ever in history from agricultural produce. Look at the Ancos Borrow Program of the Central Bank of Nigeria, that gives about loans, about 80 billion naira loans, we give to about 350 small-time farmers, rice farmers, and all kinds of. And then they are all, you know, happy and grow. That is creation of jobs. While the spokesperson for the Atiko Babakar campaign, Shagun Shaumi, insists that the candidate of the PDP is the right man to provide jobs that will bring the country out of recession. You need to look at the country and ask yourself, why is it that we're not growing at the rate that we need to be growing in terms of economic development? At best, after being in recession for a long time, we're just about 1% or thereabout growth now. And the population is growing at about 3%. So it means that we have a neg negative growth. The indicators from the CBN, from the World Bank, is that we could slide back into a recession if we're not careful. Why is that happening? You need to bring someone into the government who understands how to run government and open it up so that private sector dictates can then push government and you can create good opportunity for people in government, for private sector people to come and help you develop the company like you see all over the world. Atiku is a businessman. He's run a business well. He knows what it takes to, to, to partner with private sector. He knows what it takes to bring foreign direct investment in the country. He's done it before and he can do it again. We turn our attention to security matters again as the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, has ordered the immediate detention and investigation of policemen involved in the alleged murder of one Miss Anita Akapson. The IGP commiserated with the family of the victim in a statement released by the Force Public Relations Officer, Jim Moshud. He gave them the assurance that justice will prevail in the matter and the perpetrators will be brought to justice. Mr. Capson, who is a member of staff of the National Emergency Management Agency, was allegedly shot by the police during a confrontation at Katampe Extension Area in Abuja on the night of October the 13th. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have allegedly shot and killed one suspected drug dealer in Fage, local government area of Kano State. The NDLEA commander in Kano, Hamza Adamu, confirmed the incident to Channel's television, explaining that the operatives were conducting a raid on the hideout near the popular Kantinkwari textile market when they were confronted by the suspects. 
He said the men acted in self-defense while he had instructed that the team be handed over to the police for further investigations. Also confirming the incident, the Kano State Command Public Relations Officer Magaji Majia said the order had already been restored around the area while investigations have commenced into the matter. Members of staff of the Nigeria Investment and Securities Tribunal, an agency under the Ministry of Finance, have staged a protest to the ministry over poor welfare and alleged maladministration by the chairman of the institution. Some of the issues the workers are protesting against include lack of promotion of staff, as well as what they describe as reckless transfer of members. Meanwhile, the acting permanent secretary of the Ministry of Finance has given the protesters the assurance of the ministry's readiness to investigate the issues raised. Protesting workers from the Investment and Securities Tribunal barricaded the entrance of the Federal Ministry of Finance in Abuja, displaying placards with bold inscriptions alleging maladministration by the chairman of the institution. <laughs> The Ministry of Finance is a supervising ministry for the Investment and Securities Tribunal. Reason why the protesters are here to seek the intervention of the minister to address their grievances. Notice working in ISD. The condition of service is not being implemented. All the benefits of the staff are not being paid. People are being transferred from areas of their competence to areas where they have no iota of knowledge on how to implement. Things are not working. In fact, everything is disorganized in IST. For over two hours, the protesters occupied the entrance of the ministry, chanting solidarity songs and calling for the sack of the chairman of the institution. In the absence of the Minister of Finance and the Permanent Secretary, the Director of Home Finance addresses the protesters, assuring them of the Ministry's determination to investigate the allegations. I will implore you to please exercise more patience. As you are aware, the Honourable Minister is away for the IMF World Bank meetings. They would be due back later this week. The permanent secretary also is away. And um, we will convey to them your grievances. And I can assure you of one thing. Your grievances will not be swept under the carpet. Staffers of the Investment and Securities Tribunal have been embroiled in industrial dispute with the management of the institution, leading to several protests in the past. It is hoped that the Ministry of Finance will intervene quickly and address the issues once and for all before they degenerate to lawlessness. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Terry Ikumi. Hey, Terry. Hi, Joe. Nice to see you. A former spokesperson of the Department of State Services, DSS, Marilyn Auger, has unsuccessfully challenged her retirement from office in September 2015 after the National Industrial Court in Abuja dismissed her suit. Justice Olufunke Anuwe ruled that the originating summons filed by Mrs. Auger was invalid and dead because it was filed two years and seven months after President Muhammad Buhari approved her compulsory retirement from office. In her judgment, Justice Anuwe further held that the original summons failed to disclose any reasonable cause of action. The judge pointed out that the summons was also not served on the Attorney General of the Federation, the DSS and the agency's Director General, who are the defendants in the case. The former DSS spokesperson and 44 others were demoted and compulsorily retired by the federal government in September 2015. Olga asked the court to nullify her retirement, reinstate her with all her ranks, salaries and benefits. She also requested that her purported demotion from Assistant Director to Chief Security Intelligence Officer be set aside. Meanwhile, outside Nigeria, the trial of Pastor Timo Motoshul and two others continues today at the Port Elizabeth High Court in South Africa. The first state witness, 22-year-old Cheryl Zondi, remained defiant as she was cross-examined. Defense counsel Peter Doberman has been coming through the witness statement, questioning how she could have traveled at a tender age of 14 to attend church in another city alone. 
In the gallery was a motor show's wife, Taiwo, his church members, journalists, and members of the ANC Women's League. The leader of the Jesus Dominion International Church and two others who are South African citizens are facing 63 counts and 34 alternative counts of human trafficking, racketeering and sexual related offences. The court session has been adjourned till tomorrow, October the 16th, for further hearing. Back to judiciary matters now. Uh, the Lagos state government has restated its resolve to enhance speedy dispensation of justice and restore the hope of the masses in the judiciary. The chief judge of Lagos state, Justice Okbe Emioke, stated this at the commencement of the 2018-2019 legal service with a warning to deal with judicial officers who engage in any act that will undermine that arm of government. It's the commencement of a new legal service year for the Lagos State Judiciary. <music> Members of the bar and bench gather for a special church and mosque service which held simultaneously. They appear grateful for the beginning of a new year. Words of admonition are given by clerics who challenge judges to deliver justice in the fear of God. Peace and justice are the, side, are the two sides of the same coin. Justice must, only, must not only be done, it must be seen to be done. Justice, popularly, is regarded as giving somebody his due, giving somebody what he deserves. That is justice. And fairness is judging without reference to one's interest and feelings. The governor of Lagos is present at the church service. He commends the state's judiciary on efforts made in the administration of justice. As our state remains the sinosure of excellence and the economic orb of Africa, our judiciary must continue to be the forefront of judicial reforms. To meet the expectation of the modern day justice sector, my lords, we bear the responsibility of 24 million people who look up to you and I to protect them with the law. Our justice system must remain sound, fair and effective. The chief judge of Lagos State highlights the achievement of the judiciary within the last one year, stating actions to be taken against area judicial officials. I'm serving a notice. We are not going to tolerate any offering of bribe to our workers. And luckily for me, the um, Bar Association, all the five branches, they are also working together with me on this. You know, any erring uh, member of the Bar will be reported to their branches. As many continue to raise concerns over the state of Nigeria's justice system, it is expected that the new legal year will see improvement in the administration of justice. When the news at 10 returns, Nigeria expected to pay 9% on its upcoming euro bond scheduled for the fourth quarter of 2018. That's on business news. Join us again.